10 minutes, okay. Check, one, two, three, check, one, two, three. Good evening, everyone. No doubt you've already heard about this routine exercise in criminal justice that has just recently taken place in the Roman province of Judea. And it's got all the world talking, a self-taught rabbi, a faith healer, a well-known public speaker in his early 30s who has managed to amiss no fortune whatsoever, in fact, has no permanent address, Jesus of Nazareth was crucified. And he was crucified on a charge of attempting to overthrow the Roman Empire. So we are privileged to have with us here this evening the man who brought those charges of Judea's imperial government against Jesus, Pontius Pilate. Governor. Pontius Pilatus. My name is Pontius Pilatus. And I met the one who brought the charges. Pilatus. Well, uh, Pilatus to you too. Good evening, and thank you very much for joining us here tonight. I'm sorry that you feel that way, Governor, but uh, who then did bring... Jesus was brought to me by the chief priest's personal security force. You want to get right into this right away? Is it normal for a chief priests to execute criminals? If it's just a religious matter, a heretic they want to deal with, well, that's their problem. If it is an imperial problem, they bring it to my attention. The mission of the Roman Empire has always been one of peace. Well, excuse me, Governor, but the uh, Roman Empire has never been known other than brutal treatments of its enemies. In fact, m massacring and even enslaving those that they conquer. <laughs> yes, but peacefully. Well, what, what about this Jesus made it, uh, him an imperial concern? Uh, actually, nothing. Uh, nothing. I'm sorry, I don't think I, I follow here. Why was Jesus brought to you then? The chief priests initially sent word that Jesus was stirring up trouble and trying to overthrow the empire, and that he was claiming to be a king himself, and that he was trying to organize a tax boycott. Well, upon which one of these charges did he end up getting executed for? None of them. I've seen revolutionaries before. Terrorists, all those types. But this guy was no anti-government wacko. I even asked him about the king thing, but I couldn't get a straight answer out of him. Uh, you mean about, about him being king of the Jews? I, I don't know what they were talking about anyway. Who cares what they said? The Jews already have a king. Yeah, a puppet ruler who answers only indirectly to Caesar. Herod Antipas was legitimately appointed by the Caesar to be the king of the Jews. This keeps them happy, and he doesn't give us any trouble. Besides, he doesn't answer directly to Caesar. He answers directly to me. So if Jesus was not a real and direct threat to the empire, why did the chief priest send him to you? But things get a little tense in Judea, especially around Passover time. You get people gathering in large numbers, they tend to get ideas. People who are really trying to start a war go to Jerusalem to try to stir up national sentiment. That's why I always make sure that I'm there this time of year, to make sure the festivities don't get too festive, if you know what I mean. Well. Terrorist groups do plan and plot to overthrow the Roman occupation. Exactly. And if the chief priest had gone after someone as popular as Jesus, the people would have gotten all in an uproar, and that would have gotten my boys all excited, and it wouldn't have been pretty. So that's why you decided to execute Jesus? <laughs> this was never my decision. I had nothing to do with crucifying Jesus. After the chief priests made their charges, which were re Ridiculous. They said that Jesus had been stirring up trouble in Galilee. I figured that made this Herod's jurisdiction. That's what we have him for. Let him deal with it. So you decided to have Jesus sent to Herod Antipas. What did Herod think of Jesus? <laughs> well, he was thrilled at first. He'd heard of Jesus, and he hoped he'd get to see Jesus do a trick, turn water into wine, or walk across his swimming pool. 
When he didn't get a show out of Jesus, though, and or a straight answer, he had his boys work him over a bit and then sent him back to us. Uh, yeah, we heard all about that. And in fact, we heard that Jesus had been beaten by the high priest's guards before he was even sent to you. Was he also beaten by the Roman soldiers? No, we're the Roman Empire. We don't beat on people. That's uncivilized. He was flogged peacefully with a whip. How in the world do you flog someone peacefully? The law prescribes 40 lashes for such an offense. He only received the tiniest fraction of that. I see. So how many uh, lashes would that have been? From my men, a mere 39. 39. So, Governor, when Jesus then was brought back to you, what did you do? I dismissed the case. He wasn't really guilty of anything besides not knowing when to keep his mouth shut and making the wrong kind of enemies. And I, and I seem to understand, I, I remember hearing that your, you know, your whole family ended up becoming involved. You leave my family out of this. They didn't have anything to do with it. My wife Claudia had a little dream, that's all. What was that dream about? It was about Jesus, not that my wife's dreams are a matter for the public record. She said that I shouldn't have anything to do with him. She didn't offer any more details, and I didn't ask. Just like you're not going to ask, understand? Well, I uh, certainly I apologize, Governor. Got into a sensitive area. So, let's move on. If the charges were dropped, how, how was it that Jesus was executed? Good. Now we're on to the crux of the matter. This is why I agreed to come on your show in the first place, so that everybody could be completely clear on this. The decision to crucify Jesus was not mine, nor was it the decision of the Empire. I washed my hands of this publicly. It's not my responsibility. But the order for an execution can only come from the Roman government official, and the orders of this crucifixion, as reported just this morning in the New York Reporter, had your signature on it, right at the bottom. There is no way the reporter or any of the media could have gotten their hands on the original documents. Besides, it doesn't matter who signed them. It was the chief priest that pushed for it. They were threatening to report that I was not loyal to Caesar, which, Caesar, if you're watching, is certainly not true. My loyalties have always been in the right place. And on top of that, they had the entire city in my courtyard calling for Jesus' blood. And, I understand, also calling for the blood of another prisoner. The remission of the Roman Empire has always been one of peace. I didn't want to riot for the reason I mentioned before. So there were too many groups roaming around in the town looking for the empire to destroy Judea. Exactly. Look for any excuse, especially around Passover time. So I started this peaceful custom. Once a year at Passover, releasing one convict to them, usually someone on death row. I thought that I could use this to get around the chief priests, but they thought ahead of me and had the crowd ready to call for the release of Barabbas. Uh, don't you mean the, the rebel Barabbas? <laughs> I mean the terrorist Barabbas. George Washington was a rebel. This guy was a cold-blooded killer. <laughs> I would much rather have him in jail than Jesus. I would much rather have Jesus, the king of the Jews, free than Barabbas. <laughs> oh, king say. of the Jews. Uh, so here again, this idea of Jesus being king of the Jews comes up. Are you saying here again that Jesus was claiming to be a king? Yes and no. When I pushed him on the king thing, he said his kingdom was not of this earth. Whether that meant that he claimed to be a king or not, I don't know. He kept talking about his father, and though he never said it directly to me, the chief priests alleged that he claimed to be the son of God. Hmm. Uh, what do you think? Do you think that could be true? Now, I'm quite the philosopher, but I'm not an especially religious man. I believe that the emperor is God, Tiberius, Excellency. You're a god in my book, no doubt about it. But other than that, I stick to more practical matters. Still, I've heard all the stories about the gods coming to earth and having sons. 
Jesus wouldn't tell me, and I don't know, still don't know where he came from, but I can tell you that he was unlike any other person that I'd ever met. So is that why you ended up making a sign? Exactly. I had them put a sign on the cross. Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. The chief priests had a fit. They wanted me to tack, or so he says, to the end of it. But I'm the governor. I write what I want to write. No problem with that. Well, okay. You know, our time is starting to run out, Governor. But there is just one more thing that we need to talk about. And that is this, that Jesus was buried under guard. (laughs) What was that about? This was the story that just wouldn't end. Some guy asked for Jesus' body so he could give him a proper burial. So I gave him permission, after we made certain that Jesus was dead. And uh, how might that have been determined? Well, I, Jesus had quit moving long before all the other prisoners being crucified that day, probably because of the beating that he got from the high priest guards and Herod's boys. I got one of my soldiers poke him with a javelin, and when the soldier poked so hard that the javelin went in his side a half a foot, and he still didn't flinch, I'd say that's evidence enough, wouldn't you? I should say so. Then after he was buried, the chief priests asked for some troops to guard the tomb so that Jesus' followers wouldn't come and steal his body and then claim afterwards that he'd risen from the dead. The whole thing seemed kind of far-fetched to me at the time, but wouldn't you know it, that's exactly what happened. So the body was stolen. Exactly. But how could anyone steal a body with Roman guards just right outside the tomb? It was a long and boring assignment. The guards fell asleep. That's all I'm going to say about it. But... If guards would have fallen asleep on duty, Governor, wouldn't that lead to their execution? Well, ordinarily. But they weren't, were they? <laughs> I'm, I'm not at liberty to discuss imperial military policy with a talk show host. There are reports that you conspired with the chief priests to cover up the fact that there were not any grave robbers, actually, but that rather Jesus did, in fact, come back to life, Governor. You know what, buddy? This interview's over. I'm not getting drunk into this anymore. I have nothing to do with it. Well, I guess that's that. I'll have to do for our interview tonight with the Roman governor of Judea, Pontius Pilate, That invites you all to please tune again again next week as we continue to explore this fascinating story and journey of this exclusive then interview next week with the High Priest of Israel.